Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. The ultimate VR guide for Microsoft Flight Sim coming up next on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be going over a lot of information on all the different VR settings for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So be sure to check out the chapter section down below. That might help you along in the video. I've also posted down in the description a link to my Sim Update 11 graphic and performance video. If you have not seen that, I highly recommend to check that out. Now, some of the settings that I went over in that video have changed for VR. In today's video, we'll be going over the Windows Mixed Reality application, the Pi Tool application for all of the Pimax headsets, I've also posted down in the description a link to a video I've done just recently on the Pimax XR tool. This will eliminate the need for Steam VR. We'll then be going over the NVIDIA control panel. After that, we'll go over the Microsoft Flight Simulator configuration file, followed by the OpenXR. Then we'll open up Microsoft Flight Simulator, go through all of my VR settings. Lastly, we will go over all of the settings inside of the OpenXR toolkit as well as show you how to set up the foveated rendering for your headset. If you have any questions along the way, please post them down below in the comments section and I'll get right back to you. And if the video helps you out, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. Let's go over the Windows Mixed Reality Portal and some of the settings in there first. To get to your settings in the Windows Mixed Reality Portal, we're gonna head right down here to the lower left-hand corner and click on these three dots. Above, you'll see the settings. We're just gonna left-click on that, and this should open up all the different settings for the Windows Mixed Reality Portal. In the Audio and Speech menu, there's only a couple settings that I have checked here, and this is to switch the headset audio when the portal is running, and also to switch the microphone when the portal is running. Down below in the Speech Recognition section, for Microsoft Flight Simulator, I would recommend to untick this box. The reason for that is Cortana may start adjusting things for you while you are in flight, especially if you are manually talking to ATC. Nobody clears you through the Bravo but me. Then clear me through. No. Yes. You're a or using an auxiliary program like Pilot to ATC, where the speech recognition system inside of your PC may pick that up as you telling it to do something. So I would just keep this unticked just to eliminate any issues while you are in flight. The next menu down is Startup and Desktop. First, down here in the Classic Apps section, I would highly recommend to uncheck Create Virtual Displays. If this is checked, what you're going to notice, especially if you are on a dual monitor system, that your second monitor may go black on you once you enter or open the Windows Mixed Reality Portal. This will prevent the Windows Mixed Reality Portal from creating all of those virtual displays for you, and thus also saving you some performance as well in Microsoft Flight Simulator. At the very top, I have one other item checked, and this is gonna start the Mixed Reality Portal when my headset presence sensor detects that I'm wearing it. And again, this is all personal preference things at the top, but Absolutely, at the very bottom, make sure that you uncheck the classic apps. Below Startup and Desktop, we have the environment. If you're having issues with your Windows Mixed Reality headset, i.e. the G2 or the G1, and what this is going to do, it will clear all of the data that it has tracked for your room and start compiling all new data for head tracking. So if you're noticing that your headset is kind of jumping around on you while you're wearing it inside the cockpit, then go ahead and clear the environment data and then kind of move your head around again so it can get a feel for the room. Next down, we have headset display. So let's go over these settings. At the very top, this will adjust the detail and quality while you're in the Mixed Reality Home. I would suggest turning this on low unless you're gonna be using the Mixed Reality Home for anything. Below that, we have the Change App Window Resolution. I can only assume this is going to be only if you're using the Mirror for Windows Mixed Reality that it will give you a little more definition in Mirror Mode. If I'm wrong on that, let me know down below in the comments. Below that, we have the Experience Options, and this setting here, I would highly recommend to keep this on 
best visual quality. From what I have read online, if you choose optimal performance, what that'll do is it will cut off some of your field of view, but only in one lens. Below that we have resolution. This is gonna set the resolution for the headset. And of course I would recommend keeping this in best quality. Below that we have frame rate. And in here we only have two different options. Well, actually three, but two different Hertz settings, either 60 or 90. I would recommend keeping this on 90. You can try out 60, but what I've noticed when I do switch to 60, I get this strobing effect in my headset and boy, does it give me a headache. So, but I will say that the performance does increase when you go down to 60. Below that is the IPD that is set on your headset currently. And below that we have the sleep timeout. I would recommend just keep this on as low as you can, like three minutes. This way, when you take your headset off, it will automatically shut down the displays so you don't have any display burn. Down below, headset display is pretty self-explanatory. If you want to uninstall Windows Mixed Reality, that's all for the Windows Mixed Reality. If you have any questions on this application, please post them down below in the comments section. Next up, we're going to go over all the different settings for your Pimax headset in the Pi Tool application. Remember, I have also posted down in the description the Pimax XR video that will greatly enhance the performance of your Pimax headset in both the Steam or store-bought version. At the top of the Pi tool, you'll see the settings menu. Go ahead and give that a left click. Over on the left-hand side in the general tab, this will give you the current version and the headset firmware that I'm using on my Pimax 8KX. At the very bottom, you'll see the home section. Here, I would recommend to choose close for this option. This will prevent the Pimax Home from being displayed in your headset when you are not in VR mode. Next down on the list in the HMD settings, I would highly recommend to turn your backlight up to about 70%. I've heard anywhere between 70 and 80 to give you good lighting on the headset. I think default here is 50%, which is not enough backlighting for sure. If we move down into the Games tab over here on the left-hand side, Starting at the very top, you can see the field of view that I'm using for testing is the normal field of view. The render quality I have set at 1, and we'll go over how to adjust this once we get into the OpenXR toolkit inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator. But the reason why I set this on 1 is if I move up to 1.25, it turns the resolution up to I think 4700, and that is way too much for the headset. Below is the fixed foveated rendering, make sure you turn that to closed because we have fixed foveated rendering inside of the toolkit. And I would say one of the most important things that you make sure that is unchecked on here is compatible with parallel projection. This is your opinion? It's a fact. I find it hard to believe. Would you like me to explain? I would love to hear this. In the past, this needed to be checked because Microsoft Flight Simulator is not really optimized for a wide field of view headset. But now with the use of the Pimax XR application, as well as the OpenXR toolkit, we no longer need to check this box, which saves us about 20 to 30% performance on our Pimax headsets. Below that for turn on smart smoothing, I have that unchecked. Compulsive smooth, I also have that set to close. And all of your colors down below, I have them set as default. Make sure that you check the hidden area mask and you're gonna to need to restart for this to take effect. Make sure that you hit apply and save at the bottom of the application whenever you make changes to the Pi tool. All right, so that should finish us up with the Pi tool. If you have any questions on this application, please leave that down below in the comments section. Next up is the NVIDIA control panel settings. And again, if you have seen the Sim Update 11 graphic and performance video, I would strongly recommend to watch this section as some of the settings have changed for VR. First thing that we want to do is tick on adjust image setting with preview. Over here on the right hand side we want to tick the lower option to use my preferences emphasizing and set this to balanced. Once that's done we're going to tick on the option above that to use the advanced 3D image settings and then we're going to tick apply. The reason why we just did this is because not all of the settings are able to be adjusted. So what this is going to automatically do is any setting that we are not able to adjust, it's automatically gonna set the preference for a balanced visual image on our screen. 
The next thing we're going to do is head up to Manage 3D Settings. And here we have a couple different tabs at the very top. We can either adjust global settings or we can set this up for a specific program. For those of you who are only using your PC for Microsoft Flight Simulator, you could set all of these settings up in your global settings. But if you switch between different games, sims, or applications, you may want to set up specific settings for individual programs. So to do that, we're going to head over here to the Program tab, left click there. You're going to click on the drop down, find Microsoft Flight Simulator, or whatever program you want to adjust your graphic settings for, and then give that a left click. If you're unable to find the Microsoft Flight Simulator application in the drop down, then what you would want to do is untick this box here, and then go back up here and see if you can find Microsoft Flight Simulator in the list. The other thing that you can do is click the Add button, and you should be able to find Microsoft Flight Simulator here by hitting the Browse button and adding it to your list of programs. In any case, once you have selected the application or program in the dropdown, we can then start adjusting some of the application specific settings for the GPU. At the very top, we have image scaling, and this is going to use the NIS scaling tool for your PC or monitor version only. This is not going to affect VR at all, so you can just leave this in the off position. Below that, we have anisotropic filtering. I've actually done a short video on this, and by turning this to 16x in the NVIDIA control panel will greatly enhance your visuals inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Thus, you do not have to turn on the anisotropic filtering in the simulator itself. But we'll go over those settings a little bit later in the video. Below that is anti-aliasing FXAA. We're going to keep that off. If you do have this on, that can cause some issues and some stutters. Below that is the anti-aliasing gamma correction, and this will really enhance some of the colors inside of the simulator in VR. If you keep this off, it's going to look a little more washed out. So the default for this setting is on, and I recommend to just keep it on. Below that, we have anti-aliasing mode. We're going to keep that on application controlled as well as anti-aliasing setting. We're going to make sure that's on application controlled. Anti-aliasing transparency, we have that set to off. Background application max frame rate, we're going to keep that off. I went into a little more detail on what this is going to do in the Sim Update 11 video. So I would just keep this off for either PC or VR. CUDA GPUs, I have this set to all. Low latency mode, make sure that you have this set to off for VR. Below that is the max frame rate. We're going to keep that off. For those of you who like to limit your frame rate while you're in VR, here's where you would want to do that. There is a setting in the OpenXR toolkit that I will go over later in the video, but I found issues with that setting. So if you are going to limit your frame rate inside the NVIDIA control panel would be the area to do that. Under OpenGL GDI compatibility, I have this set to auto. OpenGL Rendering GPU, I have selected my GPU. Power Management Mode, I went back to Prefer Maximum Performance. Preferred Refresh Rate is Application Controlled. Under the Texture Filtering category, here's where things can help your performance as well as your visuals. Texture Filtering Anisotropic Sample Optimization I keep this set to off. If you would like to add a little bit more performance in VR, you can turn this setting on. But I will tell you that it may introduce some shimmering or glistening objects in your picture. Below that, under texture filtering negative LOD bias, we're going to set this to clamp. And what that's going to do is it will not introduce aliasing on objects while you are moving. So for the clouds, it will help reduce the pixelization on your clouds. It may not get rid of all of them, but it will greatly reduce the amount of pixelization. Below that, under texture filtering quality, I have this set to performance. I've tried all the different settings here, and I don't really think these actually do anything other than change some of the other texture filtering options when you change the texture filtering quality. So if you do change the texture filtering quality, make sure that you go over the other texture filtering options that they are still set where you want them. 
For texture filtering, try linear optimization. I have this set to on. If you want to help reduce shimmers and glistening items even further, you can turn the trilinear optimization off. And that will also enhance the picture quality inside of the headset. Below that, under threaded optimization, we have this set to auto. Triple buffering, we have this set to off. Vertical sync is set to use 3D application setting. Below that, we have virtual reality pre-rendered frames and this is kind of a crapshoot between everybody's system. Everybody has different viewpoints on this particular setting, and the only thing that I could recommend for you is to try the different settings that we have available. One through four, and what this will do is it will pre-render frames for your GPU to then process. When I've set this to anything over one, I can literally see the little bit of lag in the headset, and it really messes with my eyes. It, it hurts my vision. It hurts my eyes. So for me, I leave this on one. Other people that I've talked to, they set this to four and have a very smooth gameplay. So you're really going to have to test this one out on your own. The last setting on the list is the Vulcan OpenGL, and I just keep this on auto. Before we finish up with this portion of the episode, I just want to give everyone another quick performance tip for the NVIDIA control panel. Down below, if we click on system information, it'll bring up another menu for us. In this menu, we can see that we have resizable bar. And another video that I will post down below in the description will explain what resizable bar is and how it can help your performance on your system. Now I will say that this is only gonna add about 5% increase in FPS, so don't expect a ton of extra performance, but nevertheless, it is extra FPS. Over here on the right-hand side will tell us whether resizable bar is activated on your motherboard or if it's not activated on your motherboard. If yours is not activated on your motherboard, then you may need to update your BIOS before you are able to see the setting inside of your BIOS menu to activate this feature. Once that is done, you will also need to use the NVIDIA Inspector tool. All of this will be down in that video I have posted in the description. So if you'd like to know more about Resizable Bar, be sure to check that out. All right, so that finishes up with the NVIDIA control panel settings. If anybody has any questions, post them down below in the comments section, and I will hopefully be able to answer those for you. Next, we're gonna go over the Microsoft Flight Simulator configuration file. In the past, I've always taken a shortcut using the community folder to backtrack to get to it. In today's video, I thought it may be more beneficial for me to show you how to get there using the file explorer. Now, I do want to preface this by saying that I am using the store-bought version and not the Steam version. So if you are using the Steam version, yours will be in a different location. Also, if you're using the store version and put it in a different location, when you installed it, it will not be in this location either. So to get to the configuration file for Microsoft Flight Sim, we're gonna head down to File Explorer. Over on the left-hand side, we're gonna go down to Local Disk, double-click Users, and then we're gonna double-click on your user for your PC. Next, we're gonna scroll down to where it says App Data. We're gonna double-click that, and then we're gonna go into Local. Now, some users said that they found their community folder in the roaming folder, but for me, mine is located in the local folder. So I hit local. You're gonna scroll all the way down until you find packages. Double click that. Scroll down until you find Microsoft Flight Simulator. We're gonna then double click that. And then we're gonna go down to where it says local cache and then double click that. All the way at the very bottom, you should see your user configuration file. We're gonna left click to highlight and then right click and we can choose whatever application we would like to open it with. I'm gonna use Notepad++. Once open, you will be left with a screen very similar to this one, and if it's your first time opening the configuration file, it may be a little daunting to look at, but don't fear, we're gonna go over exactly what you need to change here. Now, most of these settings are able to be adjusted inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator. There's only a few that we don't have access to. So to find your VR settings inside of the config file, we're gonna use the scroll bar and scroll all the way down until we get to the graphic VR section. 
So all the settings below here will pertain to VR. Everything above is going to be for monitor. In the VR section, there's only a couple things that we're going to change here. So we're going to scroll all the way to the very bottom to where it says post process. In post processing, we have several different options that we can turn on or off. Now, to know if something is on or off, this is a binary scale. So if it's labeled with a one, it's turned on. If it's labeled with a zero, it is deactivated or turned off. So here are the settings that I use for VR using the HP Reverb G2. Eye adaptation, I have turned off. Color grading is personal preference. I like to keep color grading off because I use the post processing tool inside of the OpenXR toolkit to adjust my colors. I'll go over that later in the video. Below that, we have the sharpen. I would highly recommend to turn this off. When you do turn this on, you will start noticing some bad aliasing because it's trying to sharpen things up a little bit too much. So that's pretty much all we need to do inside of the configuration file. Now that you have adjusted all these settings, we need to make sure that we save that. So we're gonna head up to the file, go down to save, and as you can see, mine is not highlighted here because I didn't make any changes, but yours should be emboldened so you'll be able to click on save and you are good to go with your config file. For those of you who may be noticing that your user configuration file is changing whenever you adjust any of the settings inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator, well, you can combat that one of two different ways. The first one is most likely you're using a global setting inside of your graphics settings inside of Microsoft Flight Sim. Don't use a global setting. When you use global settings, it a lot of times will change the user configuration file back to what it was before. The other thing that you can do is to right click on that, go down to properties, and select this as a read only file. Now what that will do is it will make this file not able to be changed either through Microsoft Flight Sim or trying to use Notepad++. The downside to that is if you like messing with your settings inside the simulator, they won't take any effect. So you're gonna to need to leave this unchecked if you wanna make some changes inside of the simulator and you want them to take effect. So that should finish us up with the configuration file. If you have any comments or questions on this section, post them down below in the comments section. The next application we're gonna go over is the OpenXR tools for Windows Mixed Reality. If you don't have this tool, I would highly recommend to pick that up. You can do that by going down to your start bar, over to the Microsoft Store, and at the top, just type in OpenXR, and you can find the toolkit there available. From there, you can select Download to download this application. What this application will allow us to do is a couple different things. One, we can select to use the latest preview for the OpenXR runtime. Below that, in render settings, I would highly recommend to check the box for custom render scale and set this to 100%. Below that, we have the option for motion reprojection. I leave this disabled because we are now able to turn this on and off in the OpenXR toolkit. So once you finish up adjusting all of your settings inside of the OpenXR tools for Windows Mixed Reality, you can exit out of this application and we no longer need to open this for any reason unless you want to adjust some of these settings. So we're gonna go ahead and exit out of the application now. Before we open up Microsoft Flight Simulator and go through all of the VR settings and the OpenXR toolkit there, I thought we would open up the OpenXR Toolkit companion application first. For those of you who have never used the OpenXR Toolkit for Microsoft Flight Simulator, you really don't know what you're missing here. Of course, I could get a hell of a good look at a T-bone steak by sticking my head up a bull's ass, but I'd rather take the butcher's word for it. So links for the application website will be down in the description, so be sure to check that out. Once you have the application installed on your PC, you will have a menu very similar to this one. At the very top of the companion application, you will know that the OpenXR Toolkit is active because it will tell you the version and that it is active on your system. Below that, we have a couple different dialog boxes, so let's go over these real quick. If you would like to disable the OpenXR Toolkit, there's no need to uninstall anymore. We can just click on the Disable OpenXR Toolkit and it will remove it from Microsoft Flight Simulator Below that, we have the Enable Safe Mode for the OpenXR Toolkit. Now, why would you want to do this? I'll give you a prime example. 
A setting inside of the OpenXR Toolkit will allow us to change the resolution or override the resolution of the headset. Now, if you by accident make this too high of a resolution and then try to spawn back in, you will notice your FPS will just crash and you won't even be able to navigate through the OpenXR Toolkit in your headset because the FPS is so bad. So how do you get around that? How do you fix it? Once you made a little mess up, you turn on Enable Safe Mode and it will allow you to recover the application by ignoring all the settings once you start up next time. Then, while you're in safe mode, you hit Control F1, F2, F3, and it will delete all the settings. So yes, you will have to go in and redo some of your settings, but at least you're able to get back in and use the toolkit. So that's a very handy feature if you run into that situation. Below that, we have the Enable Screenshot. So if you're going to want to take screenshots through your headset, you have the ability to do that. The in headset menu visibility, I have this set to both. Below that we have the on screen menu hotkeys, so you are able to change which hotkeys that are used to access the toolkit. I leave everything on default. Below is a list of the applications that you have on your PC that is able to use the OpenXR toolkit. Make sure that you have checked for your Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 or the toolkit will not appear inside of the simulator. To check for any updates, we can go right down below to check for newer version, and that will open up the website for us. As you can see, we are on the current version of 1.2.3. Okay, so if anybody has any questions about the OpenXR Toolkit companion application, leave it down below in the comments section. Another side note on the companion application, once you have everything set up inside of the app, you no longer need to run this in the future unless you want to change things or check for newer versions. So we can just go ahead and exit out of that. All right, so let's take a look at my VR settings inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator. And again, if you have seen the Sim Update 11 video, some things have changed since then. The first option we have is anti-aliasing. I recommend to keep this on TAA unless you have a lower to mid-range PC and you may benefit from DLSS. You could try the various DLSS render resolutions, but for me, it really made the GPS units and any screens inside of the sim a little bit too blurry for me to read. If you have different results on your PC, please leave your PC specs and what settings you use down below in the comments. Below that is AMD Fidelity Sharpening, and this is going to enhance a lot of your ground texture resolution. So how you'll notice this is if you look at the ground and turn this down to zero, and stay looking at the ground and turn it up to 200, you will notice that you're able to see all the different cracks and little undulations in the pavement. I didn't really notice any difference on building, so I just keep this at 100%, seems fine. Below that, we have reprojection mode, I keep that off. World scale, I don't use world scale on Microsoft Flight Sim. If I did, I would want to use it in the OpenXR Toolkit. Below that is NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. Now, in the Sim Update 11 video, I recommended keeping this on Boost and Ultra, but in the more testing that I've done in VR, having this on or on and Boost will give you some latency in your GPU. So, how I did this test is I turned every variable off in the Sim, no traffic, clear skies, flew the exact same route, the exact same height, and once I got to a particular spot in that route, when I had this turned on to boost, I could see my latency shoot up past my CPU latency, which then introduced stutters inside of the sim. Below that is the global rendering quality. Here's where I told you earlier when we were dealing with the configuration file is to not use a global setting. So what I recommend to do is to keep it on custom and then go down below and set each one of the settings individually to what you prefer. In the advanced settings, under terrain level of detail, I have set at 100. I have messed around with this, and certain areas I can set this to 200 and not have any FPS degradation. When you get into highly populated cities, I found that turning this down back to 100 will give you better performance in the sim, less stutters, less lag, things like that. Off-screen terrain pre-caching, I have set to ultra. 
Now, I do want everyone to know that my internet speed is very, very slow. So what this is going to allow us to do is to keep a cache of everything that is in your virtual space around you. And what this is going to help do is when you turn your head quickly from side to side, that it does not have to download that information real quick and display it. So for someone like me that has very bad internet, this can be very helpful because I don't have a lag when I turn my head now. So if I were to turn this down to low or medium, when I turn my head, my FPS will literally drop 5 or 10 FPS before coming back up again, and that introduces a little bit of a stutter for me. Below that, we have terrain vector data. I keep this on ultra. It does not give me any performance decrease inside of VR. Buildings and trees I have set on medium. Buildings, if you set this to high, I have seen that this can cause some issues for stuttering and lower FPS. So to help out with that, I just keep that on medium. Grass and bushes, I have set it low. Objects level of detail at 100. And I think you could probably crank this up to 150 or even 200 without any noticeable decrease in performance. Biometric clouds, I have set on high. I have tried ultra, but that really gives you a performance hit on your PC. You may also notice that if you have a lower to mid-range PC, that turning the volumetric clouds down to medium will greatly improve your FPS. And I'm talking like 5 to 10 FPS in certain situations. Below that is texture resolution. This is one of those settings that I recommend to match whatever you have set for your PC. The reason for that is, and I've explained this many of times, now you'll notice if you try to change your texture resolution, it will then prompt you to restart the sim for the settings to take effect. Anisotropic filtering, I have this set to off, and that's because we have it set at 16x in the NVIDIA control panel. Texture super sampling at 8. Texture synthesis, I have this also set on ultra, and I've had no performance degradation from low to ultra. It didn't really matter at all. Waterways, set at medium, shadow maps at 1024, terrain shadows 256, and contact shadows on medium, as well as windshield effects and ambient occlusion are all set on medium. I have found that if you set anything higher than medium on ambient occlusion, it will take away a couple FPS. Same thing with windshield effects. This doesn't directly impact your FPS if you're not having any rain effects or anything like that on your windshield. But I will tell you, it really didn't make much of a difference as far as visuals going down to medium, but it does help drastically in your performance. Below that, we have cube map reflections I have set at 192. Raymarch reflections are set to off. And for those of you who have questions about turning off the Raymarch reflections, I still see ice buildup on the windshield, the wings, snow, I see all of it. Light shafts I have set to high, bloom is set to off, and cockpit refresh rate set on medium. All right, so that takes care of all of the Microsoft Flight Sim VR settings. If you have any comments or questions about this section, please post them down below in the comments section. Now let's move on to the OpenXR toolkit. Hey, if you're enjoying the content today and like to help us out even further, go down below and tap on the thanks icon. Your support is greatly appreciated. All right, so we are now in VR and we are also using the Windows Mixed Reality Mirror Mode to get this display to show. So if you're wondering why the graphics or the clarity is not all that great, well, that's why. It's because we're using mirror mode. If this is your first time using the OpenXR toolkit, you will probably be prompted with a little tutorial on how to use the toolkit. By hitting the Control and F2 keys should open your display for you. The first thing to notice when you open the toolkit is we have all of our menus at the top of the toolkit. Performance, Appearance, Inputs, System, and Menu. The first menu that I recommend to go to is the Menu, Menu. In this menu, you want to go down to Show Expert Settings and make sure that this is checked to Yes. This will open up all the other settings inside of the OpenXR Toolkit. Once that's done, we can head over to the Performance tab, and now we can go through each of the options in our Performance tab. At the very top, we will have the different overlay options that we can use once you close out of the menu here. So we can either show the FPS, we have an advanced counter, and the developer counter. We'll show you the advanced counter here in just a second. 
Below that is the target frame rate. Now, target frame rate is not going to limit any of your frames at all, but what it will do is show you how much headroom you have with your CPU. So let's show you what I'm talking about. If we go down to target frame rate and turn this down, we're gonna set this on 20 or 30, whatever you want to, and then close the menu or exit out of the menu, you will now see that we have a GP headroom option under the FPS. This will tell us how much headroom we have over the frame rate that we had set here to target. Below the target frame rate, we have our upscaling and sharpening options. We have off, the NIS scaler, the FSR scaling tool, and the new one, which is the contrast adaptive sharpening. So what is contrast adaptive sharpening and who can use it? Anyone from an NVIDIA user to an AMD user is able to use the CAS function inside of the OpenXR toolkit. Now, what is it? Well, contrast adaptive sharpening helps increase visual quality by enabling sharpening with optimal upscaling to restore detail lost after TAA is applied. Now, for the AMD users, there is a side note here for using the CAS. For games that support CAS, turning off the Radeon image sharpening in the Radeon software is recommended to avoid oversharpening. One other thing to note if you are using the contrast adaptive sharpening is that you see when we select this, we are no longer able to upscale the image. So if you do need to use upscaling to get better performance, then you're not gonna to wanna to use the CAS. You're gonna either choose NIS or FSR. And in my personal opinion, of the two, the FSR gives much better clarity in your headset. Below that is the anamorphic scaling. And if we turn this on, this will allow us to manipulate the width and the height of the resolution in our headset. In my personal opinion, I don't recommend to mess with this unless you know what settings you want, because you can just go down that rabbit hole and it's really not gonna be worth it to you. So I would just leave the anamorphic scaling off. Below anamorphic is our size, so if you are using the NIS or the FSR scaler, you are able to upscale your image into your headset. So for those of you who are using a mid to low end PC, then I would recommend to maybe turn this down to 80 to 90%, and that will greatly help your performance inside of the simulator. You will have a slight clarity degradation, but it is much better than not using the scaling tool at all. Underneath of the scaling size is sharpness, and for FSR or CAS, I always use 100% sharpness, and that seems to give me the best results in my headset. So now let's get into the fixed foveated rendering and how to set this up for your headset on your PC. You can start by using my settings here, but everybody's system is different and everybody's eyes are different. So what looks good to me may not look good to you. Take these settings maybe to start with, and then you can start tweaking them once I go into explaining how to visually look for certain things. Let's run down the different ring sizes first, and then we'll get into how to adjust these rings. So the first one down is the inner ring resolution. This is always gonna be one times or 100%. We also have the ability to adjust the inner ring size. Below that, we have the middle ring resolution, and below that is the outer ring size with the outer ring resolution. Now, one thing you'll notice here is that we do not have the ability to adjust a middle ring size, only an inner and the outer. So that means that the percentage between the inner ring and your outer ring is your middle ring. So anywhere from 65% to 90% is using the middle ring resolution. Below that, we have preferred resolution, and I select vertical here, so it just gives me a better scope when I'm looking from top to bottom, like going from the windshield down to my instruments inside of the cockpit. Below that, we have horizontal scale, and by default, this is set to 125%. If you are a Pimax user, I would recommend to turn your horizontal scale up to about 150% just because of the extra FOV. Now let's get into what exactly all of these settings are gonna do for you. So one thing to note here is 
on the screen that you're viewing would be what you would see when you're looking through your VR headset. So if you were to take off your VR headset, this is what you will see on your screen. Now on the left side and the right side panels of the screen is what is actually being displayed inside of your headset. You just can't see all of that area because it's out of your field of view. Now you can easily tell the separation between your inner ring, the middle ring, and the outer ring. All right, now moving back in the headset, if we take a look over here on the left-hand side, we can clearly see a distinction between the inner ring and the outer ring in the headset. That is perfectly visible on the screen here. But looking through the headset, this part of the screen, or this part of the lens in our headset, is actually lower quality than what's in the center of our lens. So we don't actually need to have this section of the screen as high of a resolution because we don't actually get that resolution by looking through the lens on that section of the lens. I hope that makes some sense here. So that means the very center of our screen or our viewing screen, so the very center of the lens, we want to make sure that we have the best resolution. And as we work out closer to the outsides of our lens, we go lower and lower resolution. We have one thing that works against us, and that's called our peripheral vision. So if you are adjusting these ring sizes based on what you are looking at directly in front of you, that's going to be a little bit different from what you're seeing in your peripheral. So what's right in front of you, what you're directly focused on, may look fantastic. But as soon as you look out in the distance, you may start noticing artifacting on the outside edges. And then once you set up your initial ring sizes, you then need to put your headset back on and then go into the sim and see if you're noticing any artifacting on the sides, top, or bottom. So now I know if I come back into my headset and I'm getting some aberration over here, I know this is in my middle ring and I can adjust some of my settings accordingly. Now, if you are using a Pimax headset and you're using normal mode, it may be beneficial for you to turn your horizontal scale up to 150%. Now, let me show you what that does once we take off of the headset again, and you'll see what happens to those concentric circles. So now if we take our headset back off again and take a look at the screen, we can see that the concentric circles that we had are now turned into more of an ellipse. And this is going to help stretch out the resolution on the sides so it will accommodate that wide FOV inside of your Pimax headset. If you are using a G2 or something with that type of FOV, keeping this on 125 seems to be just right. So now that you understand how to use these rings to help better adjust your headset to your PC, I just want to let you know what settings that I am using on my system. The inner ring size I'm using 65%. My middle resolution is at one half. The outer ring size is 90% and the outer ring resolution is one eighth. The horizontal scale that I've used is 125. Below the horizontal scale we have horizontal offset as well as vertical offset. Now what this is going to do is this will bring your rings up, down, or left or right depending on where you want the hotspot to be. Below that we have turbo mode and this is an experimental feature. Now for those of you who are using an Oculus Quest or the Meta Pro, one thing that I noticed when I did some testing on the Meta Pro is that I could not turn off asynchronous space warp. Even if I turned it off in the tray tool, the debug tool, turn the turbo mode on and then you will see your FPS will go higher. If you do not have an Oculus device, then I don't think this makes much benefit to turn on turbo mode. Below that is frame rate throttling, and I went over this a little bit in the NVIDIA control panel, and I told you there, if you're going to throttle your frame rate, do it inside the control panel and not the OpenXR toolkit, as I found that when you drop below the frame rate using the OpenXR toolkit, it did introduce some stutters and lag until it was able to get back to that frame rate. The next menu at the top is the appearance, and here's where we're able to adjust all of our post-processing colors inside of our headset. 
This is the reason why I turned off the color enhancement inside of the configuration file. So you want to make sure that you turn post-processing on. If you go down to sunglasses and you scroll over, you can see that the lighting is changing in the background on the screen, depending on what type of sunglasses you're going to put on your head. Below sunglasses, we have all of our different settings for our picture quality, contrast, brightness, exposure, saturation, vibrance, highlights, and shadows. If you want a more realistic looking picture with less saturation, then try out these settings here. I tried to get it as close to real life as I possibly could, but of course, we all know that we can't replicate the amount of light that comes from the sun, so I got it as close as I could. If you have any tips or anything on these settings, let me know what you think down below in the comments section. Below all of these settings, we have world scale, and this is where we're able to adjust how big or small our world is that's around us. So while you're sitting in the cockpit, if you notice that, hey, this plane looks a little too small, or you look down at your seat and go, wait a minute, Visually, my body is bigger than this seat is. That guy in a little coat. Then turn up your world scale a little bit so that you more match your surroundings. Again, every plane may be different with this feature. It can be a little tedious if you like to fly many different planes and you want that world scale to be just right. So you can play around with this. I found anywhere from 100 to 106 worked pretty good for me. To the right of appearance, we have the inputs tab at the top, and here's where we can adjust a shaking reduction in our headset. I'm going to talk about the Oculus headsets here real quick, and I found that if you are using an Oculus device connected with a link cable to your PC, that the shaking reduction needed to be turned way up. And that was when I was using the Meta Pro. If you're using a Quest 2 or any other Quest device, let me know what you put here for your settings. If you're using a G2 or a Pimax headset, you really don't need anything more than 10%, and that'll help even things out, especially if you don't want to see your heart beating in your headset. The next tab over is the Systems tab, and here we're able to override the resolution. We can also turn on or off motion reprojection. Now, one thing that I did talk about earlier in the video for the Pimax users, in the Pi tool, I recommended that you set your resolution at 1. Here's where you can adjust or override that resolution to get a little bit more quality out of the headset without causing too much lag. So what I recommend for the Pimax headsets is to turn on the override resolution and crank up the display resolution to about 40, 20, or 4,000. That will really improve the clarity inside the Pimax without much performance decrease. Below that we have motion reprojection and here's where we can turn that on or off. And below that we have our color gains. I have adjusted some of these colors because I felt that the blues were a little bit too much and the greens were a little bit too much. So I just decreased those ever so slightly. Below the colors we have a field of view adjustment for our headset. Now, for me to really show you the benefit or disadvantage of using this, we're going to spawn into the simulator right now. So hang tight, and I'll bring everybody right back. So for this portion of showing the FOV and the impact of performance, I just want to show you that I am using clear skies for the weather. I am not using any live traffic, and all of the aircraft should be off, other than any static aircraft at the airport. So this way we can get a more comparable reading and there won't be any clouds or anything to construe what our results will be. So now first I would like everybody to take notice of the FPS that we're getting right now, 36 FPS. So now if I open up the toolkit and go down to adjust the field of view and we have this set to advanced, we're gonna take all of these down to 90%. And we're gonna see if this is gonna give us any performance increase in our headset. But what this is gonna do, it will cut off a little bit of the picture, but supposedly the performance gain will outweigh that. Now, if you take a look at the FPS counter, so let's go back in again and turn all these back up to 100 and take note of our FPS again. But there is one thing that I did note that was a little bit interesting when messing around with the FOV. 
we go down and change the field of view to simple, let's go down and adjust the FOV lower. Now, in theory, the lower we reduce our FOV, the better the performance should be. But let's go ahead and take this down a little bit further than 90%. Let's go way down. Keep an eye on that FPS counter. So we are removing our field of view, and yet the FPS is actually decreasing and not increasing. So as you can see here, we took it all the way down to 62%, and our FPS is lower. We now only have 34 FPS instead of 36 FPS. So changing the field of view, I don't think gives you any performance increase. So now let's go ahead and turn the field of view back up to 100 again and just take a look at our reading. And as you can see, the FPS went right back up to 35 to 36 FPS. The next setting that I want to go over in here is the disable mask. So what that's going to do, it's going to remove the goggle look when you take your headset off and look at your screen. Let me show you what I'm talking about real quick. Let's take the headset off. So now you can see that mask has been removed around our visual display. Now this may be beneficial if you're using a Pimax headset, but look at the FPS at the top, 33 FPS. We lost about two to three FPS by disabling that mask feature. So if we go back in and turn it back on, mine the FPS at the top, and you will see we have shot right back up to 36 FPS again. So make sure to keep that mask enabled. If anybody has any questions about today's video, please post it down below in the comments section and I will get right back to you. Thanks everybody for joining us on today's episode. If you haven't done so, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.